One of the things you talked to me about the other day was uh, the Beatles. So the Beatles were the, were the creation of, of the Tavistock Institute. And you know, you have to go back to the college days on the, the writings of Aristotle. And I made a note this morning of, before I came on this program of what he said about music and its influence on politics. He said, emotions of any kind are produced by melody and rhythm. Therefore, by music, a man becomes accustomed to feeling the right emotions. Music has the power to form character, and the various kinds of music based on the various modes may be distinguished by their effect on character. For one example, working in the direction of melancholy, another in the direction of effeminacy, one encouraging abandonment, another self-control, another enthusiasm, and so on and so on through the series. And what I discovered was that the actual Tavistock Institute took this up, this theme, and they said, we are going to put this into practice. And well before Theo Adorno, who was the creator of the Beatles, of the Beatles arrived in England, he was already well known to Tavistock. And he was offered a facility at Scotland at Gordonson School, where the royalty were educated. And as soon as he landed in, he had to flee Germany because he was tink tinkering with the minds of children through music. And uh, he was known as the Karl Marx of music, and his theoretical music of composing music was adapted from another musical radical, a guy called Alpen Berg, who had challenged the tonality of contemporary traditional music sounds. And Adorno claimed he was on a higher awareness where every music work he composed, he said, was likely to be difficult to understand and shock people. And he called his sound, I think he said, was uh, corrosive and unacceptable. And he, he adapted it from a strange... Uh, music that was produced by a cult or the cult of Dionysus. They had devised a 12 8 tonal system, which was a new form of sound. And he said this sound was corrosively, corrosive unacceptability to what he called the commercially defined sensibilities of the middle class. And his own words, he said that uh, his music was stylish, stylish, I think he said old fashioned. And uh, he said, this is what I'm going to try and do. And then he started writing all these songs and the, these things in the 12 eternal system. How he got hold of the Beatles, is, I'm not too sure about that. But I did go over to Germany and I found out where these people had begin, been operating. And uh, to understand the, beautiful, the Beatle music, one has to understand why Adorno championed new music, as he called it. And it's, it really sprang from his belief that the, uh, what he called the bourgeoisie did not want music that makes demands on the senses. They wanted easy things to listen to, nothing that would bother them or make them think. <coughs> and of course the Tavistock new science scientists said that's exactly what they needed. They needed this new music that they could kick around like a football and then uh, pass on to mass audiences which would involve themselves in this new musical experience, a sort of fundamental revolution that would affect millions of the masses who are generally known to have only a very shallow experience in music. And thus was born a whole set of uncomfortable music, as he called it, Adorno's term, based on the 12 atonal system. And that he composed specially for the Beatles, and people wonder why they were called the Beatles. Well, he took this from the Scarab Beetle, which is an ancient Egyptian symbol. And uh, the Scarab Beetle, was, that was what inspired them to call the Tavistock New Science Scientists to call them, this group, the Beatles. It wasn't just a name chosen out of the picture. <coughs> and he also worked on voodoo drumming, which was quite, is, is quite a complex subject. He said it's not simple, but consists of complex patterns that affect the mind. And of course, the Beatle music didn't come anywhere near close to achieving such a state when it was first introduced, uh, but it regressed. And as we know, later, later groups came out of England, all out from the same stable, and they, their music became absolutely brutal. I mean, rock music today is brutal. It brutalized the mind and desensitized the so sensitive. Oh, okay. There's a continuous broken meteor played over a repetitive beat with the left hand and increasing in tempo, and then, of course, it's, it's, it's been proved over and over to have a hysterical effect on the mind and the body and on the whole body organs. And that's precisely what Tavistock wanted to happen. 
but they did it, did it just a little bit at a time. They, they bit the, brought the Beatles in and gave a gradual introduction as to what mm -hmm. was to follow. And, you know, we have some of the worst stuff come out of England. Well, I go to the Rolling Stones and even I'm just wondering uh, whether that brutality, which uh, I would have fixed uh, almost nearly completely uh, today, uh, to uh, to rap music. After going rap through music, rap music evolved from rock and roll music, right? Uh, but I, I think there definitely is. Um, of course, what they wanted was they wanted to, they used the Beatles as a for proliferation of the drug use, drug usage amongst the American youth. Mm -hmm. And you know, the cover words in the song, the Beatles song, was "Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds," that stands for LSD, and the yellow the yellow submarine was signified a particular a particular type of get high drug it was like a yellow submarine in shape and uh, these were all code words which became very well known to the teenagers at the time well then let me ask you because I mean Lennon has denied John Lennon has denied LSD meant that but that's another thing what I'm curious about too is if you know if obviously the Beatles were a construct of Tavistock they they obviously knew things and I'm just wondering if Lennon is assassinated, which I think he was, I think that's an MK Ultra classic hit. Was he willing? Was he about to say something? I mean, was he about to give it away? Yeah, he was. Ah, he was about to blow the whistle. That's exactly. That is true. It got absolutely sick of the whole thing, and he was about to blow the whistle. And do you agree that that is a Manchurian candidate set up? Oh, sure. Yeah. Beatles should understand they're part of the integral. They're an integral part of the Aquarian conspiracy which sprang um, from a paper done at uh, Stanford University under the aegis of Tavistock called The Changing Images of Man. And the, the Beatles, and it's not a spontaneous rebellion by youth against old social systems. It was a carefully crafted plot by Tavistock, uh, which, of course, they were careful not to identify themselves, to introduce a highly destructive and divisive element into a large population group targeted for change against his will. And new words and phrases were prepared by Tavistock. And social social scientists were introduced to America along with new music, such as rock and teenager and cool mm -hmm. and discovered and pop music. And these were a lexicon of disguised code words, sickness, sickness, and signifying the acceptance of drugs. The codex was inserted into the Beatles songs, as I've told you, you see in the sky, diamonds, and so on and so forth. And the word teenager, by the way, is unknown just before the Beatles arrived on the world stage. Never been, never been heard before. All these were created, along with the music, they created a whole lexicon of new terms as well. Uh, can I ask you, though, you know, I wonder what George Martin's role was in all this, and you may not know, but it, was he the acceptable personage out there who could... Uh, I don't know. Yeah. That's a tough one. All right. Also, I want to run something by you. Uh, I had told you that I got in touch with a researcher who has done work in Adorno. He clearly is just not a usual composer. Uh, he's very much involved with, I think, the psychology and sociology of music. Of course. Now, I'm just going to throw a line out from another researcher, not the one that I wanted to uh, speak to, but somebody uh, to which... This individual referred uh, someone else. I'm going to just ask you about this line. This is kind of cryptic. Uh, we may not have the time to go into it, but let me just do it since you're here, Doctor. And that is, specifically, uh, I'm wondering whether Adorno or others in the Frankfurter School, I guess that is, ever articulated a free speech theory in these terms, possibly in the specific context, context of an anti-fascist program. Not of an anti-fascist program, no. They didn't. Was what? But um, was Adorno chased out of Germany because he was an anti-fascist? He was chased out of Germany because he was tinkering with children's minds. Okay. To music. To, to music. And he was promoting socialism, which was a very uh, taboo subject for Germany. Being close to communism, the, the Germans equated socialism with communism. That's why he was chased out of Germany. He was actually tinkering with the minds of children through music. I right. got on to him pretty quickly, and he was chased out of Germany, and he was given sanctuary by the British royal family, and he was put up at Gordon's School, which, as you probably mm -hmm. know, was where Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and Prince Charles, and all the British white lawyers get educated. Uh, as Tavistock was to the uh, the British, uh, the, what we call the British uh, Second Invasion with music. Oh, absolutely. 
it was behind, they were behind us every inch of the way and uh Ed Sullivan was instructed uh -huh. to, get, to go out and gather, gather as many teenagers, the ponderance of girls if possible, young girls. They were paid $20 each and bust out to the airport in New York. And they started swooning and crying and going mad when the Beatles. They'd never even heard the Beatles' music, not been played in America. Yep. Uh, last question, and, 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 and as tab stock was to the invasion by the Brits. What about Stanford Research Institute, perhaps? That's part of it. And rock and roll here. It's under control yeah. of Tavistock. Right. And, that, and I name all these institutions that are controlled by Tavistock in the United States, and it's a pretty formidable list. And I would recommend that if anybody really wants to know more about the subject, not because I've written the book, but it's the only book I know of that really lists all these organizations. That's mm -hmm. the fourth edition of my book, mm -hmm. The Committee of 300. If anybody would like to order a copy of it, they can go to the website, www.coleman300.com, or they can call us at 702-448-5532, and uh, we'll gladly uh, service their needs. Mm -hmm. Well, those three titles especially that we've talked about to some extent, and that is the, the fourth edition of the committee. Yes. Also, the Rothschild Dynasty and the Tavistock Institute. Right. And the Tavistock Institute. It's really a, that is. a threesome of books that should really be read in, in tandem with each other. Yeah, and um, uh, and folks, like I said, uh, you know, they're very well aware of what you've done. And uh, with this fourth edition, uh, we're looking forward to it. And uh, listen, I thank you for being with us.